Hi guys, welcome to Joshua's Section. Please excuse the background noise. I'm currently in our silver room right now at work. So in today's video, I'll be replacing this whole file silver that we have right here. Right? And I'll be virtualizing it to our new Dell EMC hyperconvert system. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, stay tuned. The way I work, we recently procured a Dell EMC VX Rail system. Right? This is it right here. So what this system is, this is Dell's new hyperconvert system. So a hyperconvert system basically comprises of compute, storage and networking in all in one solution. So basically this device you're looking at right here replaces an entire data center. So literally, all this equipment you're seeing here can be stored within this system right here. So some of the benefits of doing it this way is that one, it's a smaller footprint, so it consumes less power. Two, it's a single point of management. So from an administrative point of view, it's much easier to manage. Three, it's much more scalable than a traditional server since each component can be upgraded separately, such as the compute or storage or networking. These can each be upgraded separately. With traditional servers, more or less, you would have to replace the entire server if you wanted to do something like that. But this is more, much more scalable in terms of upgradability. And four, it just looks super cool. Look at it. So enough talk, let's get into the actual virtualization process. So this is the actual file server that we'll be virtualizing. Um, this is the specifications that it currently runs. So as we see, there's 8 gigabytes of RAM. Definitely we'll be upgrading this once we migrate the server over to the VxRail system. And this is the VxRail data center that we currently have. On the left hand pane, these are the current um, virtual machines that we have on this um, VX Rail system. Once we add a file server, you'll see it appear here as well. So first what we need to do, we need to download the VMware vCenter converter, the standalone converter. I'm going to leave a link for it in the video description where you can download it. And this needs to be downloaded and installed on the server that you actually want to virtualize. So in my case, this would be downloaded and installed on our file server. So as you can see on the desktop of our file server, I already in downloaded the installation package. So what we're going to do, we're just going to double click on the installation package to begin the process. So it take a few seconds for the wizard to actually start. So just be patient. So you want to click next. And next again. Go ahead and agree to the terms and click next. Next again. So leave it on the local installation option and click next, click next again, and next again. And just give it a few minutes for the installation to complete. Now you want to select finish and give it a few seconds and it will automatically run the converter. Alright, great. So now that the converter is opened, we want to select the Convert Machine option on the top left hand corner of the screen. So for the tab that says Select Source Type, um, remember we are running this wizard on um, the local machine. Right, so what we're going to select, we're going to select this local machine since this is the machine that we actually want to virtualize. And if we click the view details, basically this will just give us an overview 
of the current machine that we're going to virtualize. Alright, so what we want to do, we want to select next. So on this page now, we need to select the destination where the virtual machine would be um, stored, where it would be virtualized to. Alright, so on the top tab here, we could select either VMware infrastructure, virtual machine, or we could select VMware workstation. So we're actually going to store it on VMware infrastructure, it's a virtual machine. So we're going to leave that selected and I'm going to enter the IP address for our VxRail manager. And I'm also going to enter the credentials, username and password for our VxRail manager as well. Once that information is entered, you could go ahead and click next. So it's given me an error when I try to connect to our VxRail manager. This is because it's using a self-signed certificate. So we could just ignore this message. So we're now connected to our VxRail manager and it shows us a list of the current VMs that's currently hosted on it. We also have the option to change the VM name here as well if we choose to do so. All right, so I'm gonna select next. So on this screen, it actually will give us the option now to choose where exactly we'd like the VM to be stored. So this gives us a list of the current nodes that we have on the system. Our system currently has four nodes, as well as the data store, different data stores that we have. So I'm going to select this data store and I'm just going to leave it on the default node one. Right, and I'm going to select next. So on this screen, it's given us the option to adjust the different parameters of the VM. I'm just going to leave it as a default and click next. Now it's given us the option to select which volumes we'd like to copy. So I'm just going to leave it as a default as well and select next. The screen just basically gives us a summary of the VM. So I'm just going to select finish. So we just want to give it a few seconds to actually create the virtualization task. And here we can see that the task has been created and it's currently running. So let me maximize this a little bit. And if I select the task at the bottom, we have some details of this task um, included. Um, the time it started as well as it gives you a bit of additional details in terms of you know approximately how long the task may take to complete etc. So just an update as we could see the virtualization process was completed successfully um, this particular um, server took a little over three days to, to be virtualized. So if we now look at our VxRail manager, we can see that the virtual machine has been added successfully here. Right? Here if we select it, we can make additional changes in terms of editing the hardware, etc. If we choose to do so. So I'm not going to really edit any details at this point in time, right? but I'm just showing you, you can do so if you so choose to. I probably will increase the, the RAM um, later on. I'm going to leave it as it is right now. So let, the big test is let's see if it actually powers on. So let me power it on by simply clicking the power button and give it a few seconds to power on properly. And next, moment of truth, let me try logging into the machine. So I'm simply going to launch the console and I'm going to select the web console option to launch it. 
and success as we can see the new VM is has successfully powered on and we now have the option to enter our credentials to log into it so that brings us to the end of this video guys I hope that you found it interesting remember if you like the content I'm creating be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released thanks again for viewing see you soon